Got another question here on the acids, bases and pH topic. So we're to number five now. As always, the link to the questions in the description of the video. Click on that, try the questions, play on for the answers. Okay, so part A, first bullet point, explain how the student could prove that the propanoic acid is weak by taking a single pH measurement. So I've already started the answer. I'll just explain this a little bit and then take it from there. So if we think about propanoic acid's concentration at the start, there is 0.1 moles per decimeter cubed. If this was a strong acid, it would be fully dissociated. And so therefore the concentration of H plus would also be 0.1 moles per decimeter cubed. So therefore the pH would be minus log of 0.1, so it would have a pH of 1. So to prove that this is a weak acid, all we've got to do is take the pH. If it's greater than 1, that means the H plus concentration isn't as high as 0.1, and therefore it's not fully dissociated. So second bullet point now, how could the student then calculate the acid dissociation constant for propanoic acid? So I've already written up the Ka expression and then simplified it. Remember, these are the same. So how do we get the H plus concentration? It's 10 to the minus pH. So Ka is going to be 10 to the minus pH squared over the concentration of the acid, which was 0 0.1. Part B now, we're effectively dealing with a strong alkali, strong base. So we use the Kw expression in the calculation. Reminder, at 25 degrees C, Kw has this value, and there's the Kw expression. So effectively, we want to calculate the OH minus ion concentration, which will also be the concentration of the sodium hydroxide. It's a strong alkali, fully dissociated. So Kw rearranges for OH minus to this, Kw over H plus concentration. So 1 times 10 to the minus 14. H plus concentration, remember, is 10 to the minus pH. And that gives us an answer of 0 0.29 moles per decimeter cubed. Moving on to part C now. So we've got a reaction between two acids effectively, but one's strong and one's weak. Nitric acid, hopefully everyone knows anyway that it's a strong acid. Propanoic acid is a weak acid. Carboxylic acids are weak. So what's going to happen? The strong acid is going to donate its proton to the weak acid. Obviously, the, the weak acid is going to end up um, acting as a base. So that's what's going to form. So I'll just quickly explain the conjugate acid base pair stuff. So looking at the HNO3, what's it done? It's donated a proton to that and it's become that. So that's a pair. I've just highlighted them in one colour, but obviously you wouldn't be able to colour them in in the exam. So it's, we'll call this pair one. So this is acid of pair one. This is going to be the base of pair one. So if you think about this, it could accept a proton and go back to that. So that is a base. So obviously the stuff I've highlighted in yellow is the other pair. So we'll call this pair two when we label them up. So what's the propanoic acid doing? It's accepting the proton from that. So that's the base. Becomes this. This could donate one of these protons here and go back to that. So that's an acid. And a couple of equations to finish. So the first one, equation between aqueous propanoic acid and magnesium. So just keep in the back of your mind, acid plus metal makes salt and hydrogen. So there's the equation for the first one. For the second one, I'm going to sort of break it right down. I'm going to write the full equation, then I'm going to pull the ions out, and then we'll talk about the ionic equation as a result of that. Now, I know this is a bit of overkill just for one mark, but if there's anybody not quite sure about ionic equations still, hopefully you'll appreciate this. So the overall equation between um, propanoic acid and sodium carbonate I'm putting the state symbols in. Obviously, you'll see why in the next um, step. So acid plus carbonate makes salt, water, and carbon dioxide. So that's the overall equation. So let's extract the ions. So anything that's aqueous, we pull the ions out and show them separately. So you've got two propanoic ions, two H plus ions from that. You've got two sodium ions and a carbonate ion from that. Two propanoic ions, two sodium ions from the salt. Carbon dioxide, it's a gas, so we just leave it as it is. And water is a liquid, we leave it as it is. So all we do now is cancel out the spectator ions, the ones that don't change. So the propanoic ions appear on both sides of the equation. So they disappear. Likewise, the sodium ions do as well. So whatever's left is your ionic equation. 